Today is December 8th, and this is video proof of authenticity. Deadpool ain't for keeping things PG just for the sake of the kids. When it goes somewhere, it goes hard. Which is why whenever Deadpool in his second movie gets access to Cable's time travel device, he of course does what anyone in his position would do. Save his girlfriend, remove X-Men Origins from canon, and of course, kill an infant version of everybody's favorite genocidal leader, Bitler. That's the baby version of Mr. Mustache. Don't look at me like that. YouTube would demonetize us like that even mentioning his name. It's an age-old question. If you could time travel, would you go back to make sure he and his paintings never saw the light of day? Well, Deadpool did just that in this deleted end credit scene that was removed from theater releases, but was then uploaded online and added to the unrated cut of the film. He travels back to find Bitler in an infant ward, but instead of laying waste to the child, he instead removes the waste from his nappy. He then mentions how even though he couldn't go through with killing a baby, he would get his friend's kid able to come back as he loves killing kids. While you may not expect the most dramatic of storylines from Deadpool, on the other end of the spectrum, it would have been really weird if DC's Joker tried to pull something funny out of the depressing and disturbing two-hour drama. Well, it seems like Joaquin Phoenix thought otherwise, as various sources reported that the actor had suggested adding a blooper reel of funny moments while the credits were rolling. The segment would have featured actors flubbing lines, funny moments, and potentially the hundreds of different variations of scenes that Phoenix performed on camera. It's safe to say that a segment like that may have been a bit jarring after watching Arthur Fleck murder TV host Mare and started a Gotham revolution. Turns out that director Todd Phillips thought the same way. He said in an interview with Games Radar that Joaquin said it would be funny to put bloopers alongside the names like they did in the old days. The idea of a post credit scene in this movie would have seemed wrong and a little too light for me. All right, Shazam is one of the best movies to come out of the DCEU. Fight me if you dare. It has a perfect combination of humor, drama, and was fun for the whole family. My little cousin couldn't stop screaming in the theater when he saw The Seven Deadly Sins. With Shazam's success, it was a no-brainer to line it up for a sequel, with comic fans being apt to see Shazam's big bad nemesis to make an on-screen appearance. We're, of course, talking about Black Adam. With people not being able to shut up about Dwayne The Rock Johnson playing the anti-hero, it was a surprise when the mid credit scene and the theatrical release set up for the Shazam villain Mr. Mind instead of Black Adam. While on a panel, Shazam actor Zachary Levi said the intention is to make a solo movie for Black Adam and then link the two super beings in a conjoint movie. Which makes sense, Dwayne The Rock Johnson isn't a guy you just get in for one movie. You lock him in for as long as you can. But of course, the little reference we were looking for was only around the corner with a deleted end credit scene on the Blu-ray release of the movie. In this scene, we see members of the Shazam family sitting on their thrones in the Rock of Eternity, where one of them points towards an empty throne supposedly meant to seat Black Adam. While it may not have been in the theatrical release, this deleted scene shows us that he is surely on his way. Sony's attempt at creating a greater Spider-Man franchise of movies was fairly obvious in their outing in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Not only did we get to see two iconic villains introduced in this film, Green Goblin and Electro, towards the end of the movie, we see that Harry Osborn has access to various tech and machinery that any comic book fan would recognize. However, there was a post-credits deleted scene that none of us even got to see and only got to hear about in reports. According to the rumors, the original post post credit scene was supposed to have the recently deceased Norman Osborn's head cryogenically frozen in a jar. The man in the shadows that we see throughout the film approaches the head and says, Wake up, old friend. Any pictures of a decapitated Norman Osborn might have been a little bit disturbing, and that could have played a factor in the removing of the scene. It hints that Norman Osborn would have played a bigger role in future films, but Marvel swooped in and took the character instead, so we'll never get to see what Sony had planned. 
Who else here is excited for the Snyder Cut of Justice League? I mean, if anything, it will be interesting to see what Zack Snyder had intended before the studio had to replace him with Joss Whedon. There are plenty of theories out there as to what was missing from the Justice League we saw to the Justice League that was meant to be. There have been many hints that some members of the Green Lantern Corps would make an appearance in the end credits of the Snyder Cut. Snyder also made an Instagram post saying that he was able to shoot all of the movie apart from a moment that would have included the Martian Manhunter. It's safe to say there will probably be a couple of differences between the two releases of the movie, but one character's on-screen time that we got to see could have been trimmed down. And we know this thanks to the actor playing Deathstroke during the end credit scene of Justice League tweeting out his excitement for the Snyder Cut. As we can see, there's a couple of emojis on his tweets that could be interpreted as his character having a battle with Batman? So we've got Green Lanterns, more Deathstroke, and who knows what else just coming from the post credits? Man, this film's gonna be awesome! This is a big one to be sure. Remember way back at the beginning of the MCU? Nick Fury came to Tony Stark in the dead of night to talk to him about the Avengers Initiative. Well, it turns out that this little reveal that Marvel had plans to hint at a bigger universe of films could have been even bigger. Kevin Feige revealed as part of his Saturn Awards acceptance speech a deleted post credit scene where our favorite no-nonsense director of S.H.I.E.L.D. makes reference to characters that Marvel didn't even own at that point. Nick Fury says in this scene, As if gamma accidents, radioactive bug bites, and assorted mutants weren't enough. We can already guess that gamma accidents was referencing the Hulk, as gamma radiation is the very thing that gave the main green machine his incredible strength. But the radioactive bug bites and assorted mutants reference is the point that made fans go, Say what? You see, way back before the 2000s, Marvel filed for bankruptcy, and in an attempt to save themselves, they sold a bunch of the movie rights to their characters to companies like Sony, Fox, and a myriad of other studios. Because of this, Marvel didn't have the right to use their own characters in their own movies. It's very clear from this reference that the team behind the MCU wanted to include the X-Men and everyone's favorite web-slinger for a long time. But because the rights were still out on contract, they couldn't even mention them in passing without some danger being involved. But if they had included this scene, it's safe to say minds would have been blown. Let's pull out of the superhero genre for a second to make reference to another type of franchise. That being the Stephen King franchise. There have been a lot of adaptations of Stephen King novels over the years, some of which carrying over themes as they did in the books. Like, for example, some characters carrying what some call The Shining. But the one we're talking about is the terrifying It films from 2017. During the end credits of this film, there were some reports that there was supposed to be an end credit scene that featured a grown-up version of the character Beverly Marsh answering the call to return to Derry. The scene would have acted as a way to amp up for the sequel, It Chapter 2, and connect us with who was going to play some of the more grown-up versions of the characters, in Beverly's case, Jessica Chastain. However, for anyone who has seen the movie, you would have noticed there is no such end credit scene. There are a couple of reasons behind this. It could have been producers wanted to hedge their bets in case It wasn't a success. Looking back at it now, how couldn't it be a scare fest bringing everyone to attend? The more accurate answer was that Jessica Chastain's schedule didn't allow for the filming of the end credit scene in time for release. Our favorite Metal Clawed Mutant may have not been a fan of the tight black suits showcased in the 2000s X-Men, but fans of the comics never got to see Hugh Jackman don the classic yellow suit on the big screen, which would have been something to behold. Well, it turns out that we very nearly did get a glimpse of an on-screen adaptation of the suit in 2013's The Wolverine. In a deleted scene shipped out with the Unleashed edition of the movie, we find Logan on an airplane with Yukio getting ready to set out after the conclusion of the movie. Yukio hands Logan a box containing the classic yellow suit, which was supposed to be the scene that led us to the credits. But why was this scene cut? And why do we never see the classic Wolverine suit in any of the future movies? Director of the Wolverine and Logan, James Mangold, gave his reason in an interview, saying, Logan is the least narcissistic of all the superheroes. He summarized that Logan wouldn't want to prance around being held on a pedestal for his good deeds, which wearing a branded suit may do. Get in the tub. Really?